So today we're going to make another action game. And uh, this is going to be uh, uh, really unique because uh, it is going to be a sort of like a, a, a hunting game, sort of like the, the lesson we had last week. But it's going to be more action packed because we're going to add some behaviors to our uh, our targets as well. Add a little bit of AI to them. So our targets are going to be um, uh, moving away and moving towards the character and our character needs to be able to navigate and uh, move towards and capture some targets. Okay, so today we're going to build a mermaid underwater game. Okay, so uh, it's going to be uh, very action packed. And uh, if you like, you can change the colors and change the characters as well. Here, this is our new file. I want you to, first of all, remove our cat sprite. All you have to do is click on the uh, rubbish bin icon on the top right of our sprite. That way that gets rid of our sprite. So here we're going to click on choose a backdrop. And uh, I want you to click on underwater. On all these tabs up the top here, these are shortcuts to categorize your backdrops. So you click on underwater and then you can choose one of these underwater scenes. Okay, you can choose any, any one you want. Uh, you can choose a diver instead of a mermaid. You can choose a fish instead of a mermaid. Uh, if you don't want to do mermaids, but I kind of like mermaids. And you can uh, choose whatever uh, makes your game really um, unique for yourself, okay? And then we click on choose a sprite, okay? So after you've chosen the backdrop, we're going to choose a sprite, okay? And like we said, you can choose any underwater character, okay? So I'm going to choose my mermaid, but uh, you don't have to choose a mermaid if you don't want to. You can choose a frog, or you can choose a fish or a scuba diver. Uh, so you just scroll down to uh, whatever kind of character you want. Mermaid starts with an M. L-M mermaid. Here we are. This is my mermaid. All right, so I'm going to choose mermaid. But uh, uh, at the same time, you can choose like diver, which I think is up on the Ds here. There's diver one and two. And you can also choose like other underwater creatures as well, like fish uh, uh, and jellyfish and things like that. Shark, if you want. Okay. But you know what? I kind of like mermaids. So I'm going to go choose a mermaid. All right. This is my mermaid character. And whatever your character is, we want to make it nice and small so that we can uh, make it navigate around. And it's not going to fill the whole screen because if it fills the whole screen, it's not going to be very interesting when we try to play the game. So let's change the size of my character to 40. You change the size by clicking on the size um, uh, input number here. So right on, when you've got the mermaid selected or your fish selected, you click on size, uh, the number next to size, change it to, um whatever size you want 40 or actually 40 is kind of a bit small for me i'm gonna make it 60. all right 60. 60 seems to be a good size i want you to set the mermaid so that it follows our mouse around the stage okay so here we're going to go into events click on when flag click this represents when we start the program okay when we start the program we want uh, our mermaid to have some behavior that follows our mouse, our mouse pointer, yeah? If you're not using a mouse, then you'll be using a trackpad or your, your, your finger if you're using a touch screen, uh, but it's all going to be the same. When the flag is clicked, we want to do something special for the mermaid. We don't want her to rotate around 360 degrees, okay? So what we want to do is we click on motion, and then we go down to set rotation style left, right. This means that if I put my mouse to the left of the mermaid, it's going to face the left side. If I put it towards the right of the mermaid, it's going to face the right side. And it's not going to flip upside down. It's only going to flip between left and right. Uh, and then what we do is we create a forever loop. Go point towards the mouse pointer. And then move, we'll say five steps. After you have all these blocks ready, you click on the green flag 
to see now that your mermaid is moving towards your pointer. So your character is moving towards your pointer, but we have a problem. We have this glitching issue. So now we have an issue with this, where if I keep the mouse still, the mermaid is constantly glitching back and forth in front of my mouse. We go into control and we need a condition. We need to tell our mermaid to only be doing these movements if we are a certain distance away from the mouse. Because if we're too close to the mouse or the mouse pointer, then we're going to move over the mouse and then it's going to keep flipping back and forth. So uh, we go uh, have an if then block. So to do this, we go to operators and then do something greater than 50. Something greater than 50. Fantastic. That's really good memory there, Sammy. So uh, we go something is greater than 50. And then finally, that sensing block here, uh, where we put the distance to the mouse pointer. Once it's greater than 10, that's when we will uh, actually run this code. Okay. So now if I press the green flag and then keep my mouse still, my mermaid is going to smoothly land on the mouse and it's not going to overshoot the mouse. The next part is we are going to give this uh, mermaid or your character uh, something to try to capture. Okay, and uh, for me, I want my mermaid to be collecting starfish because I think uh, starfish are quite beautiful. And uh, I want to click on choose a sprite. And then I want to look for stars or starfishes. So let's, let's try that. You can make it so that your character is chasing something else. Okay, you don't have to chase the same thing that I'm chasing. But uh, if, you, if you're doing it for the first time, you can use the same thing that I'm using. All right, let's choose a sprite. I'm going to choose a starfish if I can find a starfish. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, there is a starfish, nice and purple starfish here. So I just clicked on animals and then you scroll down a little bit and there's a starfish. My starfish is now on the screen. You'll notice that when the starfish is chosen, I don't have any code for the starfish because all my code is on the mermaid, right? So I click on the mermaid, I see all my code that I just did. I click on the starfish, there's no code yet because I haven't done any code for the starfish yet. Cool thing about Scratch is this is called object-oriented programming, which means that uh, all of our code is attached to an object. So uh, here, uh, the code that we did before was attached to our mermaid. And now with the starfish, we have to do a whole set of new code. All right, first of all, let's make it so the starfish is not bigger than our character. Make it a bit smaller. Gonna make it say 20 for me. Oh, 20 is a bit too small. I'm gonna go 30. Yeah, okay, 30 is a bit better. My starfish is now at 30. And then we're going to give it the same event when the flag clicked because our item needs to have some behavior as well. The mermaid is purely following our mouse, but then our starfish is going to have a behavior where each time it gets captured, we add a score to the player's scoreboard. So uh, who remembers how to create a scoreboard? You go to variables and make a block. Fantastic. I mean, you make a variable. Good memory. So you go into the variables down here in the orange uh, circle, and then you click on make a variable, make a variable. After you click on make a variable, you type in your variable name and this is going to be our scoreboard. So S-C-O-R-E for score and then make it for all sprites. For all sprites. So type in S-C-O-R-E for score and then make it for all sprites. After you've typed in score, you click OK. And then you probably know what is up next. Who wants to... Um, Help me uh, set the score to zero on the uh, on my starfish. How do I do that? Um, you you go to variables and press on set set my variable to zero. Good, good. So we go to variables. We go set my variable to zero, and then we change out my variable 
to to score. That's right. Fantastic. My goodness. Everybody knows so much about Scratch. We're going to have to make these harder. This is great. All right. So we set the score to zero at the start of the game, right? When the flag is clicked. And now what we do is we're going to create a loop. Uh, we got a forever loop. And then here, we're going to make it so that our starfish is not going to be so easily captured. We're going to make it so that our starfish is going to um, move around. Uh, so here, we're going to say, in our forever loop, uh, we're going to add some motion. What is this motion? We're going to say, turn 15 degrees. But turning 15 degrees is going to be quite predictable. It's just going to turn around in a circle, right? We're going to make it so that it's going to turn a random amount. Who knows how to make it so that we turn a random amount? Um, if we want to turn it around, I think we have to, um, I think we have to get out of motion and then go into the events part. Ah, uh, good, good. Uh, it's actually in, uh, in operative. Operative? Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. I know you were thinking about uh, the part. And then, uh, which of these blocks do you think is for random? The pick random block. Good. You got pick random. And then this is what I want you to put. Negative 10 to 10 degrees. Okay. Negative 10 to 10 degrees. So you change the pick random 1 to 10 to negative 10 to 10. And then in motion, we're going to say move. Uh, let's say uh, seven steps. Move seven steps. And then just in case we bump into the edge. So if I keep, if I press play, you see how my starfish has gone to the edge and it's not coming back. Well, what I need to do is make it so that, oh, we got, we got a suggestion. Yes. It's on edge bounce. Good. We go into motion and we put in the block if on edge bounce, which is down here. You scroll down a little bit. Fantastic. Scroll down for a little bit in motion. And then you see if on edge bounce. And also what I want to do is set the uh, rotation style to left and right as well on this, um, on this starfish so that it doesn't go spinning around all crazy. So here now we have our starfish that is floating around uh, and uh, it is a little bit harder for us to catch, right? If you want to make it even harder to catch, then we, you can make it so that we change the random turning and also you can move more or less here, okay? All right, and now we need to make it so that if we get close to, uh, if we touch our character, we get captured. So now what we do is we go into another control and then we say, if then. And we put it inside the forever loop after the, uh, all the movements. After you put the if then block in, we go on to say, if we have touched our character or if you've touched the mermaid. So you go into sensing and then we go touching mouse pointer, but we change mouse pointer out to mermaid. All right. If it's touching the mermaid, then uh, how do I increase our score? Who wants to tell us how do I increase the score? When we find it, you go into variables. Mm -hmm. And then you have this something called um, set my variable, or I think, or it might be change my variable, but then you can change it to score, and then you can change it by one, by two, or by something. Fantastic. So you can put in change score by one Very fantastic work after we change our score what i want to do also is hide our uh starfish so i'm going to into looks and then we go hide the starfish uh, and then we'll make a sound make a sound start sound collect and then we're going to go one more block Wait for one second. 
or actually two more blocks. Wait for one second, go to a random position and then show itself again. So go into looks and then we go into show. All right, so what does this mean? This means that as soon as this star gets collected, we make a sound and we hide the starfish. So it's like we've captured it, it's in our pocket now. And then after one second has passed, the starfish will go to a random position in the screen and then show itself again and get ready to be collected again. All right, let's see if that works for me. Yeah, it's capturing the starfish. All right, so we choose another sprite. This is going to be our obstacle. I'm going to choose a puffer fish. So I'm going to go animals. And then I'm going to choose a puffer fish. You can also choose a jellyfish if you want, or you can choose a shark if you want. Uh, I'm going to choose this puffer fish. Okay. This puffer fish code, super easy. We're going to make it so that when flag is clicked, we're going to make it so that um, uh, this also has a forever loop. And then inside the forever loop, we check to if we are touching the mermaid. So sensing, if we are touching the mermaid, then we need to uh, decrease the score. So we go into variables and we go change score by minus one. Change score by minus one. Also do a, uh, oh, there's maybe do a beep sound. Is there a beep here? Play, ocean wave. And yeah, ocean wave sound. Uh, okay, we don't need a sound. We just need to change the score by one and then, um, and then move to a random position. Super easy for the puffer fish. So now we just have to chase after the starfish without getting caught by the puffer fish. But if we touch it, then we lose score. I'm minus four already. Ah, uh, yes, puffer fish is white. If you want, you can upgrade your code so that the puffer fish also chases after you as well. But that's going to make the game really, really hard. Okay.